This show, made possible in part by Apps for Autism. Whatever the target, language, communication, functional, and social skills, Apps for Autism will help you find the right app. Speech in Action, an innovative approach to learning, combines speech and physical movement to maximize retention. And Speak, Move, Play, and Learn with Children on the Autism Spectrum, boosts communication, sensory integration, and coordination through simple activities that combine speech, language, pathology, and occupational therapy. October, it's all about Halloween. Join us as we look at costumes, do's and don'ts. America has some great pumpkin activities everyone can do. Fancy Savior Sweet Seeds, GFCF Chef Tom Dickinson has a recipe for you. Does Temple Grandin like Halloween? Find out as we sit and chat with Dr. Temple. And Lois Brady explores two great Halloween specific apps. This and much more on this episode of Autism Today. Hi, I'm Lois Brady and I'm America Gonzalez and today we have a really fun show for you guys we're gonna be talking about all things Halloween first we're gonna start off with of course the costume the costume um, brings a lot of anxiety to kids and parents they're wondering what can my child be that's not gonna give them sensory overload so we have lots of examples lots of really fun costumes as you can see America and I are already in costume and these are two really great costumes for a student or a child on the spectrum. Um, number one, because they don't have to wear anything special. It's just a t-shirt. Um, America just has... Well, I actually just had this shirt at the house. It's a regular red shirt. And what I did was to go online and find an image of the superhero Chapulín Colorado. <laughs> and what we did was uh, print it on some iron-on paper and cut it out, iron it on, and there you go. It could be the child's regular shirt that they always wear. I am also wearing some shorts that, you know, just regular shorts. And um, I also have on some canvas shoes, which... I just painted myself. These are regular canvas shoes, and you can just use either, I use Sharpie for this, and I used acrylic paint for this. So their own shoes, just paint them up. That way the child won't feel like there's something weird, something new, like they don't like these shoes. It's already their own. Their own shoes. That's really important for their safety, too, is to not put anything different on their feet. Um, if they don't want to paint them, they can also add shoelaces. Shoelaces can decorate up a shoe and make it look festive and the child still has their own shoes on, so they're nice and safe and sturdy. Yes. Um, now we're gonna first go over a couple costumes that are traditional that you probably won't wanna get your child, but we're gonna give alternatives. So um, the first one I have here is a traditional Halloween mask. Even though these are scary and fun, they're really claustrophobic and they could cause a child to go into sensory overload and have a meltdown. So, oh, well, oh. one good um, alternative would be to give them something that they're already used to and that they're really comfortable with, which would be uh, their own pajamas. So, you know, have them wear their pajamas. Sometimes pajamas come with uh, decorations like Minnie Mouse or SpongeBob SquarePants. And if it gets cold, they can just wear uh, their natural robe that they always wear. And that'll keep them warm and comfortable. And America, another really fun thing to do with that is to take a safety object like a teddy bear. So now they're wearing their own pajamas, their own shoes, and if it's cold, their own robe, and they're carrying a teddy bear. They're really, really comfortable. They don't have to stress about their costume. They can be really comfortable when it comes to that. Um, the costumes or the t-shirts can also um, reflect their special interest. Like America was saying, like Thomas the Train or Yeah, Spongebob. like the Super Mario Brothers. That is like the easiest costume that you can make, you know, for your child because it is just overalls and a red shirt if they want to be Mario or a green shirt if they want to be Luigi. Luigi. So <laughs> it's, you know, their own clothes and wham, it's a costume. Um, something you're going to want to avoid if you do decide to go and get a store-bought costume is the scratchy materials. Nothing scratchy. You'll put your child in sensory overload before you even start trick-or-treating. And um, he or she is just going to be con concerned about getting it off their skin the whole time. So let's start them out on the right foot. We want them to have a great Halloween. We want them to go down, go trick-or-treating, pass out candy, whatever's best, and feel really comfortable. So no scratchy, itchy clothes on them. That'll just um, start them out wrong. 
Another alternative to the scratchy would be something soft, something that uh, bends really easily, and you know, it doesn't have any crinoline in it. Um, it would be like a karate costume, mm -hmm. you know? Go ahead, get some comfortable black pants and a comfortable uh, black uh, gi, gi, and then just put on a belt and comfortable. Yep. And could could be something he's already doing or she's already doing. They could be in karate class. They could be playing soccer. They could be playing um, little league softball. So just utilize those uniforms. They're already used to them. They make great uniforms. They do. Costumes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, the last one I have is really cool too, is um, hats are great um, costumes. They can just put the hat on, super cute, and then a colored t-shirt to go with it. Um, this one comes with its own mask. So they can start out with the mask. If they don't like it, they can put it up and just carry on the night with the hat. And everyone will know that she is Donatello because it is a very um, you know, epic and iconic uh, thing that all you need is the mask with the little face thing on it. And America, the last thing I brought for costumes is, of course, the bag. A lot of our, our children don't like carrying things in their hand, um, or they'll drop it, or it gets too heavy. Sometimes they don't have enough strength to carry it all the way through the night, so we have an alternative for that. Oh, wonderful. Um, a very lightweight shoulder bag. They could just put it around their um, neck, carry it like a shoulder bag, and when they get to the door, trick or treat, and it goes back around their neck and then they're off to the next door. Very easy, very lightweight, no hassle, no fuss. So this is a really good alternative to a handled bag is to take the messenger shoulder bag. And another um, alternative to um for a face mask would be to use face paint. Mm -hmm. So we can paint on any kind of design on there. Basically, your creativity is your limitation, so um, they can do that. And if your child um, seems to smear a lot, they also have some tattoos that you can just put on with a little bit of water, and they come off with uh, oil, baby, baby oil. And that way, you don't have to worry about smudges or smearing. Speaking of tattoos, you're going to want to put a safety tat on your child That's that right. night, and they do make Halloween-specific very cute safety tats for Halloween. So make sure you get a safety tat on your child, put your phone number, and then they're good to go. Um, some tips, America and I are gonna go over a few tips for parents to remember as you're um, going through this holiday season. First one is to start early. Start practicing, start walking with your child down the streets that you're gonna trick or treat in, going up a little bit on the sidewalks, um, practice knocking on doors, practice saying trick or treat. Um, you also um, want to practice to maybe take a look at spiders because they're probably going to see a lot of spiders in the decoration at the homes that they're going to be going to. So, you know, show them what a spider looks like, maybe have a fake one, see if they want to touch <laughs> it. If it's too much, just at least be able to look at them. Maybe looking at pictures of monsters. Uh, maybe even going to the Halloween store if you think, you know, that that's something that they can handle. There. Just to remember, there's a lot of noises, a lot of smells, mm -hmm. a lot of lights at the Halloween store. So perhaps like your Target or Walmart store might be a better, uh, you know, avenue to go. And always take them early or very late when the stores are less crowded. Yes. It's a lot less sensory. Um, and speaking of decorations, like America says, um, if you're going to decorate your own home, put up one thing at a time and have your child help you with it. Like um, our set here, we had spider webs. One day you put up the spider web. Um, how your child helps you, he helps put it in. The next day you let the child help you put the spiders in. The next day you do the pumpkins. So not to overwhelm everybody, you do one decoration or two decorations at a time and everybody helps, everybody gets their hands in it. Yeah, and that way they won't see like one day the house is normal and the next day it's a whole new world. Right, right, with lights and scary, scary faces and creatures. Yeah. <laughs> that would definitely be creepy for them. Yeah. Um, you might also want to take some uh, pictures of your child in their costume, and then when they're going out trick-or-treating, uh, that way you can write a little social story for them for the next year. And if you don't have one from last year, what you can do is you can go online and mm -hmm. you can look up social stories for Halloween. Uh, there are tons, tons of books, tons and tons of books about kids, you know, trick-or-treating and dressing up for Halloween. Uh, you can also watch on YouTube, right? YouTube has thousands of trick-or-treating videos. Just um, Google keyword or YouTube keyword, um, trick-or-treat children. Make sure you get the children in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that way they can have their peers, you know, be the uh, role models. So that's, that's really, 
really an important part is, is the front loading the child with visuals. Um, you also want to like go to a, a neighborhood that is kind of calm and you know like maybe some cool de sacs or some not so trafficked um, you know Halloween areas. Yes. You Avoid the malls. I know the malls are nice and safe. There's no cars, but they're really, really noisy and very crowded. So just yes. find the cute little streets, not a lot of traffic, and not a, a handful of other children. I think you'll be, you'll be good. You'll have a great Halloween. And if going door to door is completely out of the question, then you're going to work on maybe passing some candy out. Um, your child can be the one who sits at the door dressed up, and as they come, can give the candy away. So. Again, that's a skill you're going to want to work on a couple days, a couple weeks. You know your child the best, whatever it's going to take so that he can sit there, she can sit there and be part of this holiday and be able to pass out the candy um, and say happy holidays or trick or treat. If they're unable to say that, they're nonverbal, you can set up your whatever um, alternative device you have so they can just press a button that says happy holidays or have a good time or trick or treat. That's a, that's a very good option for them. So, um, yeah, and I think that the last thing that I wanted to uh, comment was to go when the sun is still out. A lot of mm -hmm. us always think Halloween has to be, you know, trick-or-treating at night. But, you know, if the child doesn't like being out at night or if, you know, you think he would do better um, with, you know, while the sun is still out, you might want to go, like, during the twilight hours, you know, as the sun is setting so that it will be a nice transition. And last but not least, if all else fails, be prepared for the meltdown. Have a meltdown pack with you, which has, of course, a favorite item. Um, know your neighborhood, so know where there's a place to take your child for a break, a quiet spot, bring some earmuffs, maybe some calming music. Um, and if you're far away, maybe have the, don't get too far from the car so you can go to the car, shut the doors, and, and get home. So always be prepared for that meltdown um, so that you can help your child through that. So those are our trick-or-treating tips. Um, I hope everyone has a great time either going door to door or passing out candy or maybe a little bit of both, going to a few doors and then coming back home and passing out candy. Um, if you get overwhelmed, you can always go in the house, shut the door and turn the lights off and take a break. So and that'll be the easiest way. So happy Halloween. I'm going to start out with this little pumpkin and one thing that you can do is to actually use paint, acrylics or you know these little ones uh, that you find in the tubes, they're a dollar, that's how much it cost me. So it's affordable and it's fun and you don't have to cut. Um, another thing you can do, a very favorite thing and luckily they're in the store this year and I've never seen them in the store before America, but this year they actually have potato head pieces for your pumpkin. Ooh, Does not involve a knife. You just stick in the nose, the eyes, and it's also really, really great for fine motor skills to find the hole and push it in. You're using pincer grasp. You're using a lot of skills that your OT, your occupational therapist, would be thrilled about. And you can put these anywhere you want. They do not have to be in the right spot. I just so happened to just about got them there, and there's a pumpkin. Um, great thing about this is you can pull them out and do it again and again and again and you can have a lot of fun with this type of pumpkin. Um, and look at that. And the same thing with this, you also have the pincher grasp and then you know you're trying to have control. Um, if you don't want to have like something so delicate like this, you can always just like add on tons of hair, you know, like really, really fast and like make it one of those crazy hair pumpkins and it'll be really cool. Another alternative we have, America, is a peel-off mask. And again, your occupational therapist is going to love this. Lots of fine motor skills. You just peel off the um, body parts here, and you stick them on wherever you want them. This is a, um, you can't get this wrong, it's errorless. You can put these on anywhere you want. Um, you have the nose and, of course, the tongue. So this guy is going to be sticking his tongue out at you. Again, you can put these and you can move them. You can put the nose over here. That's okay. You can put the tongue up here. It doesn't matter. Um, you can practice with mixing and matching different styles. We have a Frankenstein. Looks like a dinosaur or a dragon here. So they can mix and match many different styles and be very, very creative with this type. No knives, 
no mess, it's really great. That's, that's another alternative you're gonna find in the stores. And along the same lines, we have the stick and uh, peel, which they're kind of like stickers too, but these are felt, so they have a little bit more sensory uh, component to it. That way the child will not just be like sticking on a piece of paper, he will also be sticking on something like the uh, plastic here has a different feel than the felt does. So you're working on different sensory items, different, uh, also the, uh, this one's shiny and this one's opaque. Mm -hmm. So you know you can work on some vocabulary that way too. Again, errorless, you can stick them on, you can put the nose up here. It's Halloween, it'll be okay. You can even mix and match, I would imagine, if you wanted to paint a little on this guy. Yeah, like we can put some evil. Some scars, some fangs, some Halloween, a big S for Superman. Yeah, or like you some wanted to do. mean eyebrows too. So they can be very, very creative and not have to pick up a knife. It's a good alternative. Hi, and welcome to Autism Today TV. And today I have the great honor of being able to sit here and talk to one of my role models, Mrs. Dr. Temple Grandin. Um, so I'd like to welcome Dr. Grandin to Autism Today TV. It's thank wonderful you. to be here. Yes, thank you very much. Um, Autism Today TV, we really like to stress the importance of family, teachers, educators, all having a very structured environment, all working together in teamwork. I know that you had that growing up. You had a very strong team, probably led by your mother. Um, what advice do you have for that? And, and where would you be if that team hadn't been intact or if mom, your mother, hadn't been in the lead? Well, lead fortunately, when I was a very young child, I had very good early educational intervention. Uh, there was a doctor in uh, Boston Children's Hospital who gave my mother some really good advice and said give her normal therapy and referred my mother to a little speech therapy school that two teachers did in the basement of their house. They had some Down syndrome kids and some other kinds of kids there. And then when I was three, she hired a nanny who just spent uh, constant uh, time uh, playing turn-taking games with me, teaching me how to take turns, just uh, constantly keeping me engaged. That's just super important. Great teachers all through elementary school. Then in high school, when I was fooling around and not studying, I had my science teacher. And he got me motivated in stu to study. And I can't emphasize enough the importance of a mentor teacher, but that can make for the, the difference that can make for a child. And then uh, my aunt out on the ranch is another important mentor. And originally, I was afraid to go to the ranch when I was 15. Mm -hmm. Mother goes, well, why don't you go for a week? If you, you know, if you don't like it, you can come back. But she wants to let me not go. Mm -hmm. You see, you kind of have to kind of stretch these kids. You've got to kind of pull them just out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't stretch them, then they don't develop. But then again, no surprises. You can't do surprises. Uh, teasing was a horrible problem when I was in school. And the only places I was not teased was the special interest things. Mm -hmm. Things like horseback riding, electronics lab, those kind of activities I was not teased. Yeah, I agree. Um, you must, must push these children the next step, next step. Not so far that it scares them, they don't want to go, just that next step. How do you get your kids through Halloween? How do you get them through Thanksgiving? Halloween was my favorite holiday. Was it? I loved Halloween. I absolutely loved Halloween. Uh, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas can be kind of noisy. Yeah, um, yeah. Our family, it wasn't that noisy. Okay. You know, some families, there's a lot of music, great big party. But, right. you know, for me, it was, um, it was calmer. You know, but I was just taught how to behave in these things. Now, loud noises, uh, we didn't have noisemakers at my birthday parties. Mm -hmm. And I hated balloons, because I never know when they were gonna yeah. pop. And one of the ways <laughs> to help a child get over that would be to make, make it blow up a balloon really small, and then I pop it. And we blow yeah. them up and gradually make them louder. You know, where if the kid initiates the sound, then it's tolerated a whole lot better. Correct, correct. That's how we get our kids in the kitchen sometimes with the machines that they don't like, we let them turn them on That's and off. right. Therefore, they're not too afraid to come into the kitchen they, with all the love. They're the ones that have to turn them on. Right, right. That's a good tip. Well, there's a lot of things where iPads have really helped kids. One of the reasons why that works for when kids have to type is because when you type on the virtual keyboard, the virtual keyboard is right next to where the lettering appears. So you don't have to go like this. See, on a regular computer, when you type here, the print appears way up here. Uh -huh. And for some individuals, especially if they're nonverbal, 
they can't re remember the tension shift from looking at the screen to down at the keyboard. So there's a disconnect between here and there. Well, they've um, got to see when they touch a letter, Paul, they say P for Paul, mm -hmm. they touch P, they got to see the P appear at the same instant they touch it. Well, if the keyboard's here and the screen's up here, even on a laptop, you've got that much distance. You've got to shift the yeah. eyes up. They can't do they it. Can't Some do of the nonverbal ones can't do it. You see, they've got to um, see the letter appear at the moment that they touch the letter on the keyboard. Correct. You see, on the virtual keyboard, it's right there, right, right. above, so they see it. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the things that makes it work. There was a teacher that 30 years ago figured it out, and she put the keyboard on a box way up high on one of the old TV monitors. Of course, so that when they yes. touch the yes. letter, they could see it see appear. See it right there, yeah, yeah. I have to say, though, a lot of my children, once they master the iPad keyboard, there's something that then they can go to a regular keyboard and sit at a laptop and do that because they've already got but the now idea. They've learned, but now yes. they've got the idea. Yeah. But you see, initially, they it's don't good, get yeah. it. They don't get it because you touch a key here, they don't, they don't make the connection. And when you touch that key, it appeared on the screen. Well, I'm seeing too many kids get in kind of a handicap mentality. Right, and they aren't right. learning just basic things. How to shake hands. Well, Paul, the right. number of kids that come up to me, they do not know how to shake hands. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to shop. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to order food at McDonald's. They don't know how to do just these very basic things that I learned when I was eight years old. Yes. And I had speech delay and had no speech until age four. Oh, and I'm seeing kids milder than me that haven't learned just basic things like shaking right. hands. Just saying hi to you when That's you right. pass. Our exactly. kids, if you let them, will look down and not say a word to you, but you must bring them up. You say That's hi right. to everyone you pass. I wouldn't have expected that if I had not have listened to you, so I need to thank you for that. And I'm sure all my kids and all their parents thank you for that also. You've kind of raised the bar on what we expect from our kids on the show. Well, I want to thank Dr. Temple Grandin for coming. It has been a complete pleasure for me to finally meet my role model and mentor and being able to um, interview her for Autism Today TV. Did you know that iPad apps can actually help your child process the unusual sights and sounds of Halloween? This app, simply called Halloween by Eugene Yu, lets you choose from a large selection of spooky music and sound effects. Halloween also has a great selection of creepy recipes such as swamp juice, Frankenstein jello monsters, edible eyeballs, and brain cupcakes. Then, snuggle up with some scary stories like Bloody Mary and Hairy Toe that you can choose to read out loud or you can have your iPad read it to you by choosing the speak selection in the accessibility setting. Last, Halloween has a very large selection of wallpapers. The wallpapers in this app are, some are creepy and some are whimsical, but they make a great addition to your iPad during this season. The last thing it has is a Halloween countdown. Let's see how many days. 12 days to Halloween. The next app I chose was called Crazy Pumpkin. This app lets you choose the eyes, the nose, and the mouth, and then you can shake it to get a different color if you like. Then email it to a friend or family member. I chose to email it to my mom. The last app is called Carve a Pumpkin, and it allows you a little more creativity. You can pick your pumpkin, you can choose the eyes, the nose, the mouth, or a full face. I chose full face. Kind of a scary looking one. So you put it on your pumpkin. You can size it, make it a little bigger, a little smaller, place it on the face where you want it, and then carve it out. And it gives you a nice flickering light. Next, choose the background. And then again, you can email it off to your friends or family. Happy Halloween. Wow. I think my help's arrived. Help has arrived. So we are here for the pumpkin cutting. For the pumpkin cutting. Luckily, we have a very special treat today. We have Chef Tom in studio. Welcome, Chef Tom. Yay. Thank you very much. This is awesome. Never been in studio before. But by the way, you guys look great. Thank you. Oh, thank you guys look great. Love the Halloween costumes. Guys, this is actually my wife's Halloween costume <laughs> that she gets to use on Halloween. She gets it really inexpensive. I, I have these 
up in my closet. So, uh, yeah, she gets to have a lot of fun. And I don't dress up for Halloween because I have to dress up every day to go to work. So, Chef Tom, what do we got going on today? We are actually going to be, uh, Ooh. it sounds really kind of gross, but we're actually going to be gutting out this pumpkin. Yes. For the little secret treat inside the pumpkin seeds. Ooh. And I remember as a kid growing up, my mom and dad, they, we used to get our pumpkins and we used to uh, take all the seeds out. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna dig in right here and we're just gonna take all of these out. Can I get a handful? Yes, go ahead and get a handful, Ooh, help yourselves. Oh, that feels so nice and slimy. Great sensory activity, it's huge, this is great. If you can get your kids to dig into a pumpkin and pull out this slime, it also feels cold, so you know yeah. you can differentiate between hot and cold, slimy, stringy. Yeah. And it smells great. Yeah, so we're gonna take some of these out. And pumpkin seeds are, are as they're known in Mexico, pepitas. Yeah. Are absolutely wonderful. They're a, a wonderful treat, and these are very simple to make. They're very simple to toast. You would toast these like you would toast nuts in the oven. You use a 350 degree oven. Um, Put these on a sheet pan, toss them probably with a little bit of oil, like your favorite oil. You know me, anybody, anybody's watched, so I'm a mustard and grapeseed oil fan, mostly for these I do a little mustard oil because when it gets hot, you get the aroma of the mustard. A little salt, a little black pepper, toast them till they're golden brown and delicious, and they'd be absolutely awesome. And that's kind of my way I like to do them, so. I like the way it fills the house with the smells. Yes, like for smells. instance, do you have a recipe for like maybe a sweet version that would, you know, put the smell around the house? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, one thing you definitely want to do, if you want to make a sweet uh, pumpkin seed, what you want to do is you want to make yourself a simple syrup. And what you're going to do is you're going to take these pumpkin seeds, you're going to get a pint of water and a pound of sugar, and you're going to bring it to a boil, and then you're just going to let it simmer a little bit, and you can put all the pumpkin seeds in there and let them poach. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your oven, and you're going to turn it down to about between 175 and 200 degrees, and you got these beautiful sugary pumpkin seeds. You're gonna lay them down on a sheet pan. Make sure you spray the sheet pan so it comes up. And you're just gonna put those in the oven. If you wanna put a little salt, if you like that sweet and salty flavor contrast, which I do, you put a little bit of salt on there and you slide them in the oven and just let them sit all night. Because if you do too high of a heat, the sugar's gonna caramelize, it's going to burn, and then the seeds start to taste bitter and it's just not a really good flavor at all. So do we clean off the... Um, Absolutely, I would totally clean these off. Clean off? Maybe rinse them under rinse some them cold under water. Rinse them under water, okay. Let them dry out, and if you wanna poach them in sugar syrup, or you wanna make a savory application, that's fine. Just toss them with some oil. You can do lots of different things. You can use lemon pepper. Lemon pepper's beautiful. You can use like a Cajun spice or a blackened spice, blackened pumpkin seeds. And as America just demonstrated, you can shoot them, and it's a really great yeah fine motor activity. You would think um, that it didn't take a lot to shoot them, but you really have to grade your muscles in the appropriate way to shoot them. So you could have a pumpkin seed shooting contest. Yeah, go outside and just, just let go it outside go. outside and have fun and you're working on some fine motor skills and getting um, your kids used to some pretty slimy stuff, but it smells really, really good. Absolutely. So, so what's it, what's it going to do? It's good. Those seeds are going to go into the dirt, and what are you going to have? You're going to grow more pumpkins, pumpkins for, for next, next year. year. <laughs> there you go. What would be some good alternatives for uh, the regular Halloween candies? My recommendation, go with the hard candies. Mm -hmm. Go with the cinnamon ones. Go with the butterscotch ones. Go with the Jolly Ranchers. I love Jolly Ranchers. They're great. Go with the hard candies that are the fruit flavored ones. They have nice flavor to them. They're just sugar and water. So that's our Halloween show. Um, we hope you had a great time. Yeah, make sure you go out there and have tons of fun. And thank you, Chef Tom, for coming into the studio. This has been a big treat for us here. Oh, thank you very much. Loved it, loved it. I hope you guys all have a very safe Halloween. So happy Halloween. Happy Halloween.